you are watching this and you are debating should you go to the island of Milos or not, then I'm here for you to tell you literally to drop whatever you are doing and go and book your tickets now because literally this was the best holiday I have ever had. And because I really hope that you trust my advice and you book your holiday to Milos, I'm just here to plan it out and I will tell you absolutely everything that you need to know before going to Milos. I will tell you how can you get there, which are the best areas where to stay, which are the most beautiful beaches, what else can you do and of course give you some budget friendly tips because you know guys we're always on the budget. And if you're new here, welcome! My name is Fassi, I live in London, but I also love traveling. And if you want to see more of this informative but also fun content, don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe. It literally takes you two seconds, but it helps me out a lot. Well, the entry requirements in terms of COVID, they're pretty much the same as into the whole Greece, so I'm not going to get into too much into detail at the moment. You can go and check out this video for more information. But I just want to tell you that the island has an airport, but most of the flights are internal, like you can get a flight from Athens and land in there. Or a more popular way of coming into the island is by ferry. They are both slow ferries and fast ferries. And we took the fast one and we came from Santorini. And let me give you a little bit of short history of the island, as I told you, this is the island of Milos is known as the island of lovers because of the statue that was discovered, uh, discovered in here in 1820. It is of course also called the island of color because, all, because of these beautiful colors both uh, from the sea and just look at these incredible views. Where should you stay in the island of Milos? Well, we actually stayed at the city of uh, Adamas, which is the biggest village. Uh, I mean, I say village because it's really not that big, but it offers the most options when it comes to restaurants, hotels, also uh, supermarkets, the bus station is there, the taxi station as well. So if you want to be well connected, you should definitely stay in there. And oh, oh I was about to forget the port. The main reason why we stayed in there is because we came by ferry from Santorini and after that we say we stayed in the same city and you can also stay at the city of uh, Plaka which is actually the capital of the island it is super beautiful picturesque uh, old town but I just have to warn you that if you're if you decide to rent a car it's not ideal because most of the hotels are up on the hill on the Asian town and there is no way that any car passes from there so most of the parkings are actually down the hill and after that you have to climb up so I think if you decide to go to get around by bus uh, or by taxi then it is a good option for you but not if you decide to have a car and just a small enter parenthesis which is actually very important so you guys don't skip that if you're going like this year or next year you need to get a COVID test keep in mind that this is literally the only city into the island where you can get tested. And another popular city, Bologna, which is uh, on the northeast part of the island and it is actually uh, one of the few places which has a port. It is very calm, also very family friendly with a lot of restaurants and also it is the place on the island where the water and the sea is very calm. How to get around the island? Well, uh, the most popular option and the one which we actually decided to opt for was uh, renting a car which we booked in advance and you should definitely book your car in advance because there is such a high demand that if you go there and you haven't booked a car the chances are that you won't be able to find anything or if you do the price will be really high. And uh, another popular option which many people do is to rent um, one of these squads on ATV and of course there is also the option of uh, getting around by uh, by bus which I don't really suggest it to you unless you're you're staying for a very short amount of time because buses pass like only 
one uh, in every hour and uh, I wouldn't say it's the most convenient option also because some of the beaches are not reached by bus but from the other side if you want to save some money it costs only two euros per ride and also in the description down below you can actually find the bus schedule and let's see what are the best things to do on the island and of course we will start with the beaches because come on if you go to Milos you have to visit those beautiful beaches and one of the most famous beaches on the island is called Sarakiniko and oh my god you guys when you step uh, when you start going down it actually stops looking like you're actually on earth it really feels like you're walking on the moon and mostly because these rocks are so smooth that you can easily sit in there and it is still comfortable as crazy as this sounds adventure lovers are you here i really hope you are because i have literally the perfect beach for you so to get into this beach you really have to be first of all you have to be fit and it's even better if you have been hiking before because the only way in which you can get down to the beach is by taking this rope and then getting down to this metal pole there are quite a lot of people i didn't expect that so many people would be in there and also it gets quite dangerous at some parts so just be prepared for that Yeah, it's definitely not for everyone, but at the same time, I have to say, it was totally worth it. Look at that. And a nice, a little bit calmer beach, which I really enjoyed, is the one of Firopotamos. It is a very small beach, but um, it is one of the few places where, if you want, you can actually get uh, some bed and also an umbrella because trust me these things are not available at most of the beaches there are so many houses which kind of go even inside the sea and they're super picturesque very beautiful and there are actual people that live there at the moment and uh, Kleptico Bay is the best one and I kept it for last also because I have a story for you basically you guys I saw that on Google Maps that you can get very close into this beach and after that you can hike down for a little bit more than one hour and you will and you will see the bay and we literally tried doing that following Google Maps but after that we actually got lost with the car and uh, we also ended up at this unpaved roads up the mountain and uh, we were driving for over an hour and there seemed to be no end i would really suggest you actually doing what pretty much every tourist is doing and you can take a boat and actually it will take you all around the island and you will see clefty Bay. and if in some afternoon you're very warm as pretty much i am at the moment you can also visit the ancient roman cut catacombs and uh, the entrance is only four euros and once you're on the island of course you should also visit these beautiful cities and uh, the main city which you shouldn't miss is actually the capital which is called Plaka and uh, Plaka is a little bit of a tail of two sides from one side you have the uh, super cute Pinterest a little bit expensive I have to say Part, which is made mostly for tourists and this is where the expensive hotels are and then from the other side is where actually locals live and you can also go to the village of Polonia which is uh, on the northeast side but don't plan to spend too much time in there because it was actually a lot smaller than what I expected it is kind of like one or two streets and uh, don't forget about the small village which I told you about, which is Viropotamos. And uh, I would really suggest you going and looking at these colorful houses and also in what type of paradise are people living in there. A city which uh, most probably you have seen photos of is Glima because it is uh, another fishing village which is really popular among tourists because it is so pretty and colorful. And here are my budget-friendly tips for you. 
Well, first of all, especially I would really suggest you not going into high season. Well, especially um, if you want to save some money or you're just not a big fan of the warm weather, if you decide to go in like May or even in June uh, and or after that later in September or October, it will be a lot better time for you to go because literally everything will cost less from like the hotel, from the hotel or or also your flight. And you guys, if you actually decide to rent a car, then I can suggest to you staying outside of the main cities because the island itself is so small that even if you're outside of the main city, you can be like five minutes by car away, but the cost of the hotel will be like half of what you would pay in a bigger city like uh, Plaka or Adamas. You guys, if you haven't noticed this, I actually love Greek food, love going to the rest to their amazing restaurants, but a great tip that I have for you is to actually limit them to only one a day. best way to save money uh, is by not renting the car and uh, getting the bus. As I told you, you have to plan a little bit more in advance so you make sure you don't miss this bus, but if you're if you're staying there just for a couple of days, it might be a great way to move around. And uh, as I told you, one of the ways to get to the island is by taking a ferry. But if you decide to opt for the slow ferry, the price will be like half. From Santorini to Milos, we paid little bit more than 50 euros per person but if you decide to get the slow ferry then the price is around 25. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one still from Milos because there is still still so much that I have to show you. Love you all!